All right, basically we're gonna start from the same spot as we left off with this katana. Zombies, the bloodthirsty undead. When they arrive, will you survive? Using scientifically accurate zombie analogs, we put your favorite weapons, objects, and mods to the test in order to separate fact from zombie fiction. Zombie go boom, kick on dead ass. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And yes, if you can see, if you have eyes, you've seen the thumbnail, and it has a thousand-degree knife on the thumbnail, and that is exactly what we're going to be testing today because thousands of you asked us to do it the past couple of weeks. But we're not going to stop there. We're Zombie Go Boom. We're also going to be testing a thousand-degree machete and a thousand-degree katana. That's right. You guys should be excited. You ready? I'm always ready. Let's get started. All right, so in the original source material, which is a few videos that actually went viral, which are all in the description below, this guy by the name of Mr. Gear heated up a knife using three torches to a thousand degrees and then cut a bunch of stuff with it. Today, we need to do blades that are longer, so we decided to build this makeshift forge. And no, these aren't fire bricks. We made it really quickly, but we think it's definitely gonna work. All right, so real quick, the knife we have is a Pioneer Woman kitchen knife. It's actually ridiculously sharp. Best one we could find at the box store. We also have a Tramontina machete. Very nice, made in Brazil. And we have the Michon Katana made by Bud K. Basically this uh, makeshift forge is made of a bunch of landscaping bricks and I dug a shallow trough and just piled the bricks up on either side and I left a hole back there for, for air to go through. Now, and I left this sticking halfway through so that I can stick the blade into the fire and sort of just rest it on that. It's gonna be down in the, in the fire, but it's gonna be resting on that so that I can put the uh, hair dryer that we're gonna be used as the forced air induction uh, right here so that it can swirl around under the blade and go out back there. Now, I know I'm gonna lose some heat at the top here, but hopefully we can get hot enough and heat these blades up to a, a good portion. We wanna get about maybe half of the blade at least to be really hot. So uh, this is the best thing that we could come up with in like, you know, a couple hours. So we'll see if it works. All right, basically I'm gonna take this knife and I'm gonna push it uh, gently against the skull and just with a little bit of pressure and see how much just the heat can go into the skull. So if you want to cook your food as you're cutting it, this is a great way to do that. Wow. Look, it's starting to bleed. It is? Yeah. It's blood coming out. So, and I'm not even really pushing very much. I mean, you can see how much right there I'm pushing. That's about, I don't know, 10 pounds of pressure maybe. All right, so that is a kill when it comes to our Tim heads. And our Tim heads are ridiculously accurate when it comes to slashes and when it comes to bludgeoning damage and even firearms. But this test is a little bit different. Bone is not made out of a plastic composite, and that's what we use. It's plastic and wood fiber composite to create that bone density. 
However, when you deal with something really, really hot, plastic melts, bone doesn't. So even though it's a kill on our Tim head, it may not be that way in real life. Another thing to mention is if you heat up any cutlery item to a thousand degrees, you are ruining the temper. So if you want to use it again, don't do this. All right, now we want to see what happens when you actually stab a head with some serious force. That's why that will never work. Basically, whenever you heat metal up, the molecules expand and cause them to become pliable. So whenever I stab the front of the face, the hot tip here just bent. So essentially what we're finding out is yes, you can melt through stuff if you are steady, but if you put any kind of kinetic force behind it, you're going to do this. It might work the same way with the machete, but there's only one way to find out. All right, so for the sake of scientific control, we're going to do two things. We're going to have Charles snap cut Tim on this side of his head with the blade like that and then we're gonna have them do the same thing on the other side with the blade heated to a thousand degrees Alright, so let's look at the damage. That was just a nice little snap cut and it cut through the flesh, through the skin obviously, and into the cranial cavity. You see it bleeding right there? Just that little snap cut might actually be enough to kill a zombie. That's a great little machete right there. Too bad we're about to destroy it and try the same thing on the other side, 1000 degrees style. Alright. <laughs> is it bent? Yeah, dude, look at it. Oh, man. That's definitely messed up. <laughs> what did it do? Not, not as much damage as the other side. No, not at all. It went through the flesh and the skin, and it cut through a little bit of the bone, but it did not have enough penetration to get into the cranial cavity, so heated to a 1,000 degrees is actually worse if you're actually striking because all of that kinetic energy goes back into the malleable steel and distorts it. So the only way to make this weapon work, with our heads at least, is to hold the hot weapon to it and just push it. So what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be heating up that Michonne katana. We're going to be putting it on the neck and just pushing it across to see if we can do a thousand degree katana push decapitation. Say that ten times fast.
not going to go all the way through. Blood's coming out. Really? Yep. Oh, hell yeah. So it at least cut into the neck bone. Don't breathe this. <laughs> <laughs> That's gone through the bone. You will, if if you reheat it, I think you can get it all the way through. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my God, that's disgusting. Wow. We couldn't have done this with a normal, kind of like un unheated. Just rubbing it on the on the neck like this wouldn't go through this far. No, not at all. But, if you actually took a swing with that katana, it would bend and get destroyed. Yeah, probably. Oh, yeah, baby! That's what I'm talking about. Oh my god, that's disgusting. And that is how Chuck got cancer. Oh! oh. You did it! Oh, that's so sick. Hold on. You did it! Wow. Wait, wait, try to burn the rest of it. Wow. Yeah! Oh my god, it's smoking! Hell yeah! We got a thousand degree katana decapitation now. Could that happen in real life? Based on how hard it is for bone to burn? Probably not. We probably should do some tests. But on our Tim heads, this definitely works. Trick is you hold it and you basically push it through, kind of cut. With a sawing motion. With a sawing motion, but but if you actually try to strike with a weapon, a steel weapon that has been heated at a thousand degrees, it's gonna bend, it's gonna burr, it's gonna get destroyed. The only way for this to work is to push, and you are ruining the weapon when you heat it up that much, unless you know how to temper steel, which is very difficult. I guess that's it. These three weapons don't work anymore, but you can own them. This is an honor system kind of thing. So make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't subscribed already, and then comment, I did all of those three. Again, don't be a liar, and we'll pick one of the people, actually we'll pick three people, and you'll be surprised uh, in getting one of these three weapons that we tested today. I hope you enjoyed that video and with another mind-blowing episode from Zombie Go Boom, I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And we will see you next time.